success. But we are ready, ladies and gentlemen, to get right into this one. Will it be Wind and Rain find themselves that final spot at the live finals, or will pensioners claw it back to a third? Let's find out. The P250 of Jacob is not too happy to fight down mid. He is dinked down to 13 health before the round has really even begun. Pensioners moving in towards lower tunnels, but over on the other side of the map, Wind and Rain have pushed all the way through a long Lauti dealt with, though. Weather stops that from happening, but Pensioners seem set on splitting this B site, and that could be a problem. Well, back into the 4v4, Cryptic goes towards the window. He wants to get in and find some action, but it's a headshot from Danny Z who will take him away. And it'll be the man advantage on the CT side. And, uh, well, Wind and Rain, they turned these types of rounds around already. We've seen when they've been in 2v4s, they've been able to make it happen. And then while Shine will take another headshot, Shinny doing his best to try and pull it back for his side, but it's not enough just yet. Perhaps maybe this kill will be as Shinny lines them up. It's all on Jacob, and he will be dropped. Good recovery from Wind and Rain, and they will find the pistol. Yeah, pensioners, I was expecting them to maybe be splitting the B site mm. there. All going in through mid felt like a big, big risk. And you saw that Wind and Rain actually pushed in towards the tunnels themselves to use that as cover to be able to get away, which yep. gave them a good opportunity to hold that one down. Well, they've brought a lot of SMGs into this one, Alex. MP9s across three players. There's a FAMAS and Daddy Z. M4A4 on Lauti. It's the only rifle here. Of scouts. Worth talking about, of course. Yeah. A couple FAMAS. of scouts. Well, you know, the FAMAS isn't bad. I prefer the FAMAS to the Galil. Really? Personally, yeah. It's got a normal spray pattern, at least. Yeah, I don't know. I think uh, I think it's up in the air. I think the FAMAS is kind of it's average. I'd say the Galil is probably my preferred weapon, just because it's good at tapping at long range. I just, I've just i just never learned the spray for the Galil. That's why I hate it. I think it's just kind of like you shake your hand loads. And it's fine. <laughs> oh, okay. It just works, right? Is this why we make a pensioner's jokes? Because, like, pensioners have shaky hands Well, perhaps they should stick to the Galils, yeah. yeah. Maybe. You really love those jokes, Terrible. don't you, Alex? But anyway, <laughs> we'll get right back into the action. There's one minute and five seconds left on the clock. Currently, the advantage is still siding with Wind and Rain. Deos is barely alive, though. Two HP. He is still alive and kicking, though. Could do some more damage. The man advantage there for Wind and Rain, and Emil Shine is ready to hold this one down. The flash unsuccessful, but Emil Shine is unsuccessful in the spray down. That should have been one frag at least. Instead, Wind and Rain look like they're in trouble on this A side of the map. Lauti locking this one down with the M4, but he will fall, and pensioners are coming through on towards A. Jacob with two entries, and all of a sudden, it's pensioners with the man advantage. Yeah, well, bomb planted as well. This is looking pretty good for them. Daddy D dog flanking. Loza holding the cross. Knows this is a possibility. With him in the pit, it pretty much increases their chances by a significant margin. But the boost comes in. There's a kill on towards the site. Still, you have to remember, Loza is towards long. Jumping kill is possible. On to Cryptics, who's on 14 HP. And there Ooh. it is. It's the MP9 headshot coming in. It's all on Loza. He's the one that has to make this happen. He looks for the pick, but he's taking a lot of damage on board. Pressure building. A headshot comes in from Daddy's, and what a clutch. What a retake from Wind and Rain. Oh, it looked like Luzza was in such a strong spot to stop that one, but he ends up just kind of being caught in the open. He couldn't land the shot. He couldn't spot the man on the defuse. Ends up losing in the round, and Wind and Rain come through with their second round win, but they are going to be tested by the bye. It seems as though the chances of Petra's, even when they're good, seem to flounder, but Wind and Rain. What a retake that was. Let's see if they get off to a good start here. What near oh. damage that is. Oh no, Loza just gets stuck. The grenades follow up. At least one kill comes back through from Cryptics onto Emil Shine. Headshot from Shiny, and this is looking better for Petra's. Nice spray from Lauti, but he's out in the open, oh and he my. gets the follow-up on 15 health. Finally, Weber puts him down, and the bomb can be recovered in the 2v2, but Deos doesn't want to keep the numbers even much longer. The AWP gives his team the lead, and it's Weber, that man again, who has to try to clutch. Well, he did it a few times for his side in the last map. Time to do it again here. You know, it's back over towards T-Spawn. Oh, he has to cross the... Oh, oh. the timing. Deos would have spotted that. He's going to go over towards the A-bomb site. 
Is this actually just holding down middle assault? They're gonna go for the split, uh -oh. one over towards A, and one just kind of rotating in for the B ramp. Deos just trying to get the info, but they know exactly where he is, thanks to the shots, and that's gonna be a little bit of damage done onto Weber. He's dropped a 20 HP. And the ultimate of surprise, the possibility that he could sneak somewhere is completely gone, so. All about the fights, and Deos will win it. As soon as he takes those shots, I guess it was accidental, but it gives <laughs> away that Deos can just peek mid with the AWP. He knows that the opponent's far away at mid, He's happy to fight with the sniper. The pensioners are not going to be too happy with the buy they have on their hands into this one. Another strong start for Wind and Rain. And after that previous map for pensioners, what point do you start to think, well, this is going just as badly as the first map. It's hard to get out of that mindset after losing so badly on that first one. They really need something to happen for them here. Oh, a little bit of damage done on the Deos. And I, I will tend to agree with your point there as well, because, you know, Pension's not off to a great start, but it, cer it certainly looks better than, than Mirage technically. You know, they've you know, got close in quite a few runs, and it's certainly been a close game, but Wind and Rain have just won the battles in the first three on the pensioners, it's hard to get out of that mentality of we're just getting beat on everything we try. Nothing's going our way. And we'll try and pressure Deos, and that's a kill from Weber. Well, the scout wins the fight against the or only needing the chest shot to do so. Daddy Z trying to spray ah. this one down, but he drops down into the open. Jacob manages to find him with the P250, and Weber is waiting around the corner. They might not clear this. No scope lands, no scope on the follow up. Weber dishing out the damage, somehow finds himself a second kill, and Lauti is not in position to do much here. Yeah, Emil Shine just did not react at all there. I know. <laughs> they, he had no idea where he's being shot from, it seems. And uh, that's just unfortunate. So, Pensioners, first one on the board. Definitely all the, off the back of Weber finding that opening pick. Gives them a chance. They pressure that window. Unfortunately, Daddy D doesn't play it very well. You know, he gets the one kill. He whiffs the spray, but he just sticks it on. There's nowhere he can go. If there's so much pressure coming towards him and he can't get more than one kill there, his job's, uh, his job's not done well. And once you've got inside of the B bomb site. It's very hard to, to get you out of there, right? As soon as the T's take that bomb site, it can be a very difficult site to retake, and a pause is coming through. Yeah, you were pointing out that some of the early rounds did come quite close. That is showing in the money for Wind and Rain. I don't think they will have a full bite for this round, and because of that, this is a tactical pause for the CTs. Not too many options for aggression on Dust2 on the CT side, though. You can try and push towards A long or B tunnels, maybe in towards short as well if you go for the quick boost, but it's definitely not a map where there are easy and obvious options for aggression. Exactly, and the, the other thing is as well, when pensioners were able to find success on Mirage, they only ended up winning one round and then it just got smothered. It, the, the momentum that they built up which is instantly stopped by that of Wind and Rain, so they have to try and pick this up. There cannot be an upset here. Is Jacob going to pull the trigger? Finally does so. Yeah, but, but he's the one that takes damage. Yeah. That's not fun. Scout shot lands. This is uh, this is a fun mini game, isn't it? Ents is just crossing back and forth through the, the mid doors, but eventually he decides against it. While this has happened, though, they've been pushing up short, so the distraction kind of works. Well, Deos is actually over towards oh. spawn, and there's the kill on a Jacob. Man advantage is with the CT side. Loza with the SG is starting to, to make his way towards the lower tunnels. He wants to try and group up with his team, but they've actually made their way up short here on the CT side. And they're uh, going to be looking down towards the hey, bomb site. But at this point, it's down to Lati. Can he get anything done with that AUG? As they have multiple players starting to come in towards his position. Flashbang will go out as well. The pressure is starting to come on through. Shinny's going to be the front man, but Lauti has a great angle. Low HP, but Shinny with the headshot. Good kill coming through. They're going to have to go for the boost, and Emil Shine, he's got it. He's looking for Shinny, and he's collected the kill. Oh, that shot from Shaney was sublime, but I don't know if it will be enough. Weber, unsuccessful, and Cryptix gets one kill. Emil Shine probably should have had that one, but now Cryptix has got a chance in the clutch, trying to find the angle of engagement, Ooh. but Entz comes in from the other side. Wind and Rain pick up a fourth round win. Well, that's certainly a bad way to get things going for pensioners. They win one round again. They lose the follow-up. It's just happened so many times, Alex, and I'm afraid you can't win games if that's the case. You know, you can't afford to not win a couple in a row. You, you need to do that. <laughs> Certainly a, a factor that goes to winning games. Yeah, they've got the bomb plant. They've got the full bite. 
Exactly, yeah. Two orps on the T side. Surely Luzza must get at least one of these orps, you would think. Yeah, eventually they shuffle it into his hands. Again, though, no kills on the board for Luzza right now. We were saying earlier that in Pensioner's previous success on Dust 2, it was him stepping up. This time, though, the AWP of Jacob also similarly unsuccessful. Lauti nails the shot with the AK. Shaney's trying to hold this one, but Lauti is going to be able to push into long doors if he so desires. It does look like he's decided to do that, and so Pensioner's might have some difficulties here as the flank is going to start to come oh, through. Oh, this is going to be perfect. Lauti coming in from behind. The trigger discipline isn't oh. there, though, and he's whiffed it all. That is just absolutely brutal. Luzza, he turns around, takes the kill. Shiny follows up, and I'm afraid that could have been far more punishing, but Emil Shine will step up, and he just punishes them as they run in towards short. It's a 2v2. And Deos about to walk through with Danny Z through the smoke and CT. They just want to get close and personal. They want to take the fight instantly. And what we've seen so far from the CT side is this boost. It's been so impactful for them. If they go for it again, they might just collect a kill. But there's the all so That forces them into the open. And it's going to be the kill from Daddy Z on the Cryptics. One player alive. It's Luzza. He's got a Molotov. But the flashes come in. They can get on the defuse shortly. But the Molotov coming through at the right time, perhaps. The flash goes up. There's a kit on Daddy Z. And there's the kill from Deos. Defuse comes through as the Molotov does not land. And again, 5 1. Looking solid for Wind and Rain. And it's Immel Shine that builds them out of a hole. Yeah, it was maybe a slightly quieter start to the game for Emil Shine, but definitely came through for them in that round. Yeah, and unfortunately, the Molotov not landing from Luzza made matters much more difficult for him. On Dust 2, though, you can get the bomb plants quite often, which is what we've seen from pensioners, and that keeps them in with a shout in terms of the money. An extra $800 on all of the players means that they've got the cash for the buy into round seven. It's not like Wind and Rain have got money in the bank either. So, again, pensioners are on the verge of being able to break down the CT economy. The question is, can they actually find a round win? This time it's Shaney with the orb. Again, they're switching over that sniper all over the place. I think it's affected that perhaps the team just aren't feeling confident. You know, Luz is just not feeling his abilities right now. And I mean, they've been shut down time and time again. It's Jake Game getting dropped. Was that through the smoke from Dales? Well, just getting the spam well done. And Weber is going to pick up one as well. Daddy Z, he'll take away Shaney. And again, it's just being picked apart. Dales with another. That is, he's just holding the angle, waiting for the player to push the smoke. And there is the kill, all but over. 6-1, Alex. And this time, they don't even get the bomb down. So pensioners have to take a weaker investment into this one. Another opportunity for Wind and Rain to try to build up some money, which is probably the only issue right now for Wind and Rain, is the fact that they haven't been able to build up as much money as they might have liked. Deos peeking down mid, easy shot on towards the first man. Deos's AWP has been really, really good in those opening fights, but pensioners continue to offer themselves up towards him. Emil Shine with a good shot of his own. The Molotov forces pensioners to not be able to push towards him, but Deos is a bit too exposed towards mid, and that AWP could be recovered, but here comes the flank of Daddy Z, having pushed all the way through tunnels. Well, flash by in, and Emil Shine comes in and sweeps up the trash. 7-1. This is unbelievable. Wind and Rain off to a similar start that they had on Mirage. And Alex, seeming like my uh, my prediction is going true. Looks like it. Hard to see what pensioners can do at this point. Again, they're going for the double or And oh, there we go. Ooh. Luzza wins the opening fight. That's what we need to see more of. Wind and Rain taking a big gamble there. Yeah, double up set up on the T side. Interesting approach, and it's certainly working for them. Well, and oh no. Oh, there we wow. go. Shitty with a great headshot. He's had a couple of those so far on Dust Tooth. Okay. Much better from pensioners, I have to say. A little bit of a change in pace, and perhaps this could be the team is, but Loza will take away Deos. That was uh, lightning fast from pensioners. But yeah. again, the problem Alex has been, they haven't been able to win two in a row. Yeah, we're, we're seeing flashes of the potential of this team. I mean, that round win was, was very dominant, and also the, the shots that they landed were so quick, really quick on the trigger on those frags. 
I think the peek down mid of the CT AWP was probably ill-advised, but again, rushing down towards this position, Weber going in early. Deos is going to hear those steps, and he decides not to stick around, trying to find the angle, but unable to do so. Pensions decide to slow things down slightly, although we could see some engagements. Now that, that smoke has gone down, though, I think both teams will play safe. While pensioners posting a lot of their forces over towards long, currently inside of the pit is Imel Shine. And he's a player you have to have faith in. He's actually not towards the pit, a little bit further out towards the left, and that's where the spray is going to come in. Shinny finished off. Can you find another one as well? Here's Deos chiming in. What a shot time. This is again happening, Alex, where pensioners, they look so good in the last one. They have a great run, and then they lose all five players with a single frag. It's, uh, it's massive ups and massive downs at this point. And for Wind and Rain, on the first map, they had a, a real team effort with a lot of players showing up. In this one, Emil Shine again is always the consistent man on the team. But then Deos has also been really good on the AWP. He's had a couple of, I would say, easier fights down mid that he's been happy to take, but he's been landing those shots consistently. Pension is trying to rush up short, try to switch things up in this round, but that is not happening. Emil Shine gets them down with the AK. Luzza looking to win a 1v3. The nade will not be a nice friend for him. Down to 39 health. Well, he's got the first end of the clutch. Can he find these last three remaining players? AVP posted towards short, realizes he's wasted a little bit too much time and tries to run back over towards the A bomb site. And he has dropped very quickly after. So 9 2, Wind and Rain in control. Pensioners, the money's it's not great, I have to say. There are some players with a little bit of cash, others with not so much. So they're going to go for a very sporadic buy. The utility level, it's going to be low coming in here. They've got five flashbangs to work with, one smoke, and an HE grenade to their name. So. Certainly lacking on utility, but they got the double up setup, and that's what was working. But it's the kill from Deos to take away Cryptics. And so it has to come in huge here. Oh my goodness. This this is Wind and Rain are just playing so well as a unit. They have boosts coming in, they have great aggression. It's just looking so good on the CT side. Yeah, the AWP of Cryptics was trying to fight towards A long there. We've seen quite a few of the different pensioners players pick up the all unsuccessfully for the most part. Cloud T, oh, there's the spray <laughs> down through the door, eventually getting it done. Shaney and Luz's orps left alive. They need to just get some 1v1 fights, but it doesn't seem too likely to be happening. Shaney snipes down the first man. Four more players against him, and again, Wind and Rain are just looking too hot for pensioners to handle right now, and it's another round where pensioners cannot afford the full buy. Seems like that's the case pretty much every time, right? When they get a buy in, it doesn't have every piece of the puzzle. There's nothing available. And the utility, again, is not great. But they have got flash buyings. They've got a couple of upgraded pistols. Perhaps it's a chance to be potent in this one. But wind and rain, it should be more of the same. Rinse and repeat. Drop them like flies and get it done. Well, pensioners have looked for this mid-aggression quite often. It's the Org of Lauti here to deny them, though. The further peak is not going to work because there were two separate players on different angles. But again, Wind and Rain are just everywhere, all over them. There's the flank coming through. Weber will fall at the hands of Entz, and pensioners just kind of lose all map control and just get collapsed in on. Decent damage done there from pensioners though. Getting the three kills, not too bad. That keeps them at least modest. You can see the CT side, even after winning so many in a row, the, the money's not amazing on a couple of the players. But at this point in the late stages of the half, it doesn't exactly matter too much. As pensioners are going to have the double op setup still available. They've finally got the buy coming in. The utility level is good. They've got everything they could possibly want. And they start to run in towards B. Could this be the high octane play that works out for them? Or is it going to be a brick wall yet again? Deos with two kills. Weber and Shinny finished off. And pensioners have been forced away from the B bomb site. Oh dear, Deos dealing with the B rush, proving that the B site is not a problem either. And how is Ents here? Oh no, <laughs> this happens too many times. Oh, Cri oh no, oh god, Cryptix is there for the trade, but it just feels as though pensioners are not really putting up a fight at this point. Cryptix 
finds a follow-up. Maybe there is something going here. Jacob's Orp is trying to go for it, but Emil Shine's got the perfect timing. This is absolutely beautiful from Emil Shine. The timing is just so strong. He can actually take away both of them if he gets there on time. But there's the kill onto his teammate. He knows they're both coming through after the information was given to him. And Lauti is going to hold the cross. There's the pick on Jacob. And surely it's over for Cryptics. And in fact, it is 12-2. Unbelievable stuff coming in here. Wind and rain. They might just have a 13-2 half on their hands. Yeah, both Emil Shine and Deos really impressing on the wind and rain side of things. Kind of surprised that Deos doesn't get the AWP here for the last round of the half. Entz decides to take it instead. Daddy's is going to cross towards B. Deos with the early aggression. Jacob falling. We've seen this too many times. The opening trades going the way of wind and rain and Deos gets a little bit hungry. Probably didn't need to make that play, but when you're 12-2 up, you want those kills. You do indeed. But to close a game in a convincing fashion, you have to keep that consistent level up. And Daddy does a spot that had all oh, shitty. Oh, oh no, oh. Lauti. Oh. oh, yeah, that, this is strange. It seems as the wind and rain have just lost all that composure, but uh, okay. Headshot right through the smoke from ML Shine. Good lineup. Obviously, he knows the headshot angle. And well, Shine's going to rotate back over towards mid as well. He's going to hold for Shiny. Damage can be done right through the wall. And there it is. Drop comes in. He's looking for a little bit more towards top mid. And can this man do it alone? Can he pull it back and brick the pensioners in half? Ooh, doesn't spot the man jumping up on towards Xbox. Pensioners can isolate this player on the A site. But it is Entz with the AWP here to hold. He was looking on the barrel and he's back holding the angle again. Let's give you the pick. Surely he gets one. There it is. Does he know the seconds there? Indeed he does. So he's going to take the passive approach. Flash goes over the top, waiting on his teammate to arrive and just playing the time. Wasting it as he runs back towards Rap. That was Loz's chance. But with 28 seconds left. Oh, it's all falling apart for pensioners. They, they had the initial kills. It was looking good for them. But then there was Emil Shine. Emil Shine should have heard these steps as well. He's going to be ready on the B site. Loza had to run over, but... The player is at the door. Smoke is good. Luzza. Oh, wow. what? Okay. <laughs> All right, then. He just jumps in front of the door, and that's uh, that's the end of Luzza. So 13-2 at the half. Wind and rain. What a dominant performance yet again, this time on the map pick of Pensioners. What do we say at this point? I I, I just, it's, I, it's absolutely ridiculous. Uh, we've had so many one-sided affairs today. We had a 16-0, and look at this. Uh, so people obviously siding with my opinion that Wind and should have won this one, and indeed 72% of the community voted that, 28% for pensioners. And if you want to have your say, make sure you vote on Twitter at ESL UK. And it's currently looking like the, uh, the voice of the people is correct, Alex, because Wind and Rain are three runs away from making the land finals here at the Prem. What's the closest map we've had today? 16-7? Maybe 16-6. Yeah, it, yeah. They've n we have not had a single close map. It would be nice for pensioners to make this one close. Let's see if they can win the pistol. Not looking good at the start of it. Shaney gives away his life. Lauti is traded out. Cryptics with a couple of kills in from those barrels. Pensioners up with the man advantage, but the B site is wide open. Well, they made, they're, they're so good on their mid-run calls here, Wind and Rim. When something goes bad towards long, they just rotate straight away. They don't hang around and try and recover. And because of that, they're right back towards B. And a nice kill from Daddy. That's going to put him right back into a 3v3. Still completely outrageous to say his name, though. Yeah. I feel like Daddy's is better than just Daddy. Yeah. Well, yeah. Obviously. <laughs> it's going to be Dale's crossing over as well. Entz close towards the door. It's Loza holding off the cross, not landing a single shot, though. And because of that, it's falling apart. Cryptic hits the deck. Loza finally gets one, but Trader right back in. And what a recovery from Wind and Rain. It's oh. all on JKM. Are they going to go right back to A again? Surely JKM spots this. He does, but they know exactly where he is. So it just increases the difficulty to nightmare mode. Ooh, and there it is. Kill comes through. They don't even need the bomb plant. Wind and rain, 14-2 in the lead. And at this point, I guess if you're pensioners, you go for the force buy. You're just so far behind. You've got to do it. They've got lots of scouts. Look at this performance from Deos and Emil Shine. Mm -hmm. 22 kills and 9 on Emil Shine. 20 and 9 on Deos. Closest is 12 on Daddy's. So things are certainly looking 
excellent for Wind and Rain, and that's initial damage done onto both Daddy Z and JCam. So equal damage done. And at this point, Wind and Rain want to take a long control, and no one's really going to challenge them there just yet. So it's more when they get towards the side, the rotation coming in here from Pensioners. Only one smoke. They can't smoke off the entirety of the cross. Good shot from Shaney. Looking to find the follow-up, and he actually does so. <laughs> Shaney is running forwards. I think he's teleporting forwards almost, spamming away with the D, but finally he falls into a 3v3. Very lucky on that last shot. It fired off wildly and onto the head. Similar shine, he's still alive and he's looking to recover this. Headshot could come in towards the box player here. It's Cryptic's just hiding, biding his time, but Emil Shine a whiff spray for once. And that will be the kill from Cryptic's on the MP9. Well, Daddy, he'll be stepping up. There it is, on to Cryptic's. And that's into a 2v2. Well, Luzza gets a quick kill, so it's only Daddy Z left alive. Mac 10 is not the weapon he wants. He's <laughs> just desperate. desperate looking for something. Oh, there it is. <laughs> There was an AK behind him. His teammates did not mislead him. The fact that he can still win this is just ridiculous. He's only on 34 HP. Look at the bomb planted. The rest of the squad looking to come on in. There's no kit on the CT side. Here's the footstep. Spots one jump. Daisy's just trying to limit the positions. Bond's planted for him, but they know exactly where he is, so the pressure is starting to build. He's just trying to stay alive, trying to buy himself time, but it's finally going to be a run for the pensioner as the defuse coming through. And uh, that'll be 14-3. Not something to smile about just yet, but something in the right direction. AK picked up by Loza. Weber has one of his own hit, so they save two AKs over to the next round. Like you were saying, something for pensioners, but... It's not looking too great for them in the grand scheme of things. Wind and rain, four scouts. Hmm. I don't know what you can do with four scouts. I guess the only option here is land headshots. Maybe get some tags on the mid cross and a couple of shots land. I think maybe only the one shot actually because Shaney is on 61 health, looking fairly okay on the cross towards B. And I don't know how you take a site with these scouts. I don't know how you push up close and personal. They're really going to have to rely on pensioners peeking in towards them, which could happen towards mid. Even more damage being done. Well, this could be the first time we see pensioners put two together so far in Dust 2. Shinny has picked up the kill onto Ents. I'm not going to say that it's, uh, it's a write-off at this moment in time. Because Wind and Rain still have four players alive. All the scouts. Interesting approach into this one. All of them very capable with the weapon. Minute left. Daddy Z takes some damage on board. A couple of shots being ringed off by Cryptics as the rest of the cavalry approach. And what Whoa. a shot from Deos. That just completely opens up the A-bomb site. They might just get the plant in here for some extra dollar. <laughs> Some dollar. Yep. Okay. Yeah, uh, Milshine. Oh, there we go. Eventually gets the kill with the Desert Eagle, and Lauti finds another. What is happening? The scouts are just doing it all. Headshot after headshot for wind and rain. I've never seen a full scout by work before. That's crazy. There's a curse on the pensioners. They can't win two in a row, Alex. It's just never going to happen for them. And it. I really don't understand how this is even a thing. They they literally have not been in this whatsoever. A run like that, you're going up against four scouts and you still end up losing. It's 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 dreadful. Well, Shinny is going to take so much damage again. Just they're just standing there waiting for this to come through. As Emil Shine will pick up the opening kill onto Luzza. This could be the end as it's all but over. Cryptics left alone and it's going to be a 16-3 here for Wind and Rain. As long as Cryptics will hit the deck as well, and just got to pull off a 1v5, Alex. And it's not going to happen. It is wind and rain taking it over the line. They are the last team that will make it through to the LAN finals in very impressive fashion. As